Dual action polisher. No, the rotary. The battle of the machines. I'm Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing. And I'm Ivan from the Detailers Business Academy. And what are we doing here today, Ivan? We're going to debate which machine do you really need. See, I think you have to dual action polish to finish down, hands down. No, no. Dual action is for cutting. It's not for polishing. It's not for finishing. What? Yes. I've got the Flex 15 millimeter here, the XFE 715, and you've got the... PE 14-2150. And we're not here sponsoring any brands, but I will say these machines in our shop, they get dropped, they get used, yeah. and they're still here. So kudos to the Germans. Yeah, and you know, I've been using not this exact one, but the same model of Flex for years, and it is by far my favorite polisher. So there's a couple things here. What to finish with, and one question I really had for Ivan is, when I cut a panel and then polish it at the end the same way, if I cut it with a rotary, it has a deeper shine. It, for right. some reason, it just pops more. I can get all the scratches out with both machines. I can polish out with my DA, which is what I prefer, yeah. and one panel will have higher gloss. So technically, I'm not anti-rotary. In fact, I believe mm. that the finish is actually better when you finish the result. Can you explain to me why the rotary will give you a glossier overall product? So the rotary in itself is just turning. It's just doing one thing, and it does it well. It just goes around in a circle. The DA has the back and forth motion. So we're combining the rotation of the rotary with the oscillation of the DA. Now, the DA has, you can get an 8 millimeter, a 12 millimeter, a 15, and a 21. The higher the number, the bigger the oscillation. It's in millimeters. So 21 millimeters, roughly 3 quarters of an inch, actually 13 sixteenths. Can you explain visually what the different millimeter orbits do and why that makes an impact? So an 8 millimeter DA, like the old Porter Cable, it's basically a vibrator. All it's doing, <laughs> is, all it's doing is moving the pad by 5 sixteenths of an inch, so not much and it doesn't have enough power to actually turn the pad. You can get a bit of rotation out of it, but yeah, it's not great. 12 millimeter is normally seen in the smaller three inch DAs. Like a Rupes Duetto? Yeah, exactly, yeah. same idea. Then the 15, you get into what you've got in your hand. Yeah. So that's a 15 millimeter. Uh, the battery powered Flex is also 15. The DeWalt battery powered, the uh, Milwaukee battery powered, they're all 15. There are 21s coming. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, they're in the pipeline from different companies. That being said, the 21 millimeter to me is the more forceful cutting machine. It's not necessarily a finishing machine. I've, I've only really used five inch, uh, uh, I guess 15 millimeter DAs. Yeah. The 21 millimeters, they cut like Paul Bunyan, right? I mean, right, exactly. So the 21 millimeter DA, if you were to put a wool pad on here, so the wool pad with a foam backer, so very short nap wool. The traditional wool pad that we put on here, useless on that. The nap is too thick. But when you put a short nap wool on that with a foam backer, you end up with a, a hatchet or a chainsaw for that matter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mowing down. But the reason it's not finishing down as well, so if you're to do half the panel with the 21 millimeter stroke DA and a, a wool pad that's designed for it, and then you do the other half of the panel, cutting with a wool pad on the rotary, and then you polish both of them out. Whether you're finishing with the DA or the rotary, the side that you cut with the rotary is going to look better. Why? Because it actually is less aggressive, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, there's no micro-marring. And micro-marring happens when we eliminate the, the rotation aspect of the DA, and we just look at the oscillation aspect. Well, your fiber, if you're using wool or your foam, is going in one direction. So it's going off to the right. And then all of a sudden, bingo, the backing plate says, no, I'm going left. Well, the pad still has a bit of inertia. It's still going to the right. Hmm. And it stretches, it stretches till it reaches its limit and then snaps back. And that snapping back is what digs in a little further and makes those little tick marks that we see. But if I have a really aggressive this is actually a fantastic pad. It's the cut and finish wool pad from right. Rupes. So we're going to give love to Rupes. Yeah. Flex. This is not the most aggressive one we use. They have a, a blue one that just cuts in. But it will leave really deep divots in there in, in sort of that rotary pattern. Yeah. Um, 
so those need to be refined as well. So, so I, I understand that the dual action polisher is cutting and jiving and jabbing, but, right. but doesn't this leave things in the, in the paint So as well? this is going to leave what everybody is afraid of with the rotary, swirls. Hmm. But the swirls aren't as deep as the micromarring from the DA. They're not. No. But we're talking about a deeper gloss. So in my head, if I'm trying to get a scratch out in the clear, right. I'm going to level clear. So this big V is going to be a smaller V, but to get the clear down, I'm going to create my own scratch pattern, right? So, right? so let's talk about the scratch pattern that I've created to remove that scratch. What does it look like with a rotary versus a DA? So the rotary is actually going to round over the edges of that V a little more than the DA. The DA is going to shave more material off. It's still going to round the corners off. But this, because of the thickness of the nap, it will sort of blend it in a little better without creating more of those deep scratches. So it's leaving fewer deep scratches that I will need to refine in the next stage? Yeah. So when we did that video, when we did the training, the 555 method. Right. And so, we'll link to that above. Yeah, there's a link somewhere. And on my <laughs> channel, you won't have a link. I'll put it in the description. I don't know how to do that thing above here. But anyways. I'll, I'll teach you. I'll figure He's it out. old guy. I'll figure it out one Forgotten day. I've gotten more than I've ever <laughs> learned, obviously. But anyway, just kidding. I'm, okay. The 555 method is very simple. DA, speed five, roughly five pounds of pressure. And that roughly five pounds of pressure just means you want to put as much pressure as you can without stalling out the pad. So you still want pad rotation and for five seconds. We're not creating any heat at that point. We're just rounding over those edges. And when you look at it, where you did that with the pad with the five pounds of pressure, you get a really sort of a grayish look when you do it with the DA. Now the 555 on the rotary, completely useless. The, the People more, have asked about that on the video. Yeah. Can I do this with the rotary? And I'm like, ask Ivan. <laughs> no. Yeah. So the more pressure you put on a rotary and the more heat you create, the less it's going to cut. And again, that's contrary to what we've learned. In the 70s, we, we were working on lacquer paints. Heat was a great thing. Today's modern paints, heat is useless. Hmm. It's actually counterproductive to what you're doing. Think of it as a marshmallow and an ice cube. If you take sandpaper to a marshmallow, it's just going to ball up and roll around and do nothing. Take the same piece of sandpaper, put it on an ice cube, you're actually going to shave the ice cube off. So what we want to do is we are wanting to remove paint, the least amount possible in reality, but anyways, we're wanting to remove paint. The cooler we can keep it, the harder that paint stays, and the more we're actually shaving off. Because if you get it hot, those abrasives that are in your polish, instead of going across the surface and cutting, they actually go into the surface and roll, and go into the surface and roll. It's like trying to take a rock across rubber. It's not going to do anything. All of this sounds like you know what you're talking about. And I need to w <laughs> ask you one more time, yeah. why, when I cut with a rotary, is it so much nicer after I've polished both handles compared to a DA? And I, I know you were saying something about the scratch pattern from a DA on the compound stage. Because when we polish, we're just refining the scratches so they're so minuscule that it appears as if it's perfect. Right. So, so when I refine with the same pad and polish on a dual action panel versus a, a rotary panel, and we've removed the same amount of scratches, what, what happens when I'm polishing and it looks perfectly shiny, no ticks, no rotary marks on both panels, but the rotary panel looks better? What, what's happening in those last two stages uh, even, even the last stage with the polish. So the rotary actually cuts less than the DA. People have the, this impression that this cuts more. No, but it's better for finishing. It's only going in one direction. And your eyes don't see the marks that we have. It's a trompe l'oeil in French, which is actually an art form. Uh, you know, people, you'll be walking down the sidewalk and it looks like a big abyss in the sidewalk while someone's painted a, a hole in the sidewalk. You're looking at it. it from your eye, it's thinking there's a hole there, but because it's of flat the one, concrete. Because of the one direction? Yeah. So, so this is like, this is a little trippy to me. This is, uh, this is transcendental. And when you, so if someone tries, they take a rotary. The big errors that people do with a rotary come down to technique and speed. And the technique is, you know, the typical polisher's technique down like this and up on an angle and speed and yeah, no. Keep it the slowest speed possible. So right now it's set to speed three. No, speed one. 
I'm a speed four to five on the rotary guy. Yeah. Tilt it, sling it, <laughs> yeah. make a mess. Right, no. Three step after that to get out my marks. <laughs> right, exactly. So speed one, the lowest speed your rotary will go. No pressure whatsoever. You've seen me use a rotary. How do I hold the rotary? You, you like, you to, finesse it with one finger and you just let it go? Yeah, exactly. Let the machine do the work for you. You're not working for the machine. Secondly, pad choice. Now, you know me, I wake up in the middle of the night around 3, 3.30, so I can hate flat pads just a little bit longer every day. You're Mr. Waffle. Waffle textured pad, it doesn't matter. It can be a, yeah. This is from Shine Mate, but I quite like it. Yeah, so it can be like that as long as it's not a flat pad. So a perfectly flat pad, not a good idea. A couple of reasons. For the cut and the finish? For the cut and the finish. Heat generation, for one thing. Secondly, the user experience. When you're using, whether it be a waffle, that, a CCS, whatever, you're breaking that surface tension a little bit, and now it's much easier to guide the machine. It is, I will tell you, on a hood, yeah. right, a flat hood, when I'm finishing polishing with that waffle, I just find it's much easier to almost hydroplane and kind of caress the paint in like right. really beautiful, like I'm not, I'm not dropping edges, I'm just kind of, I'm almost doing the Ivan, where I just sort of let it stay flat. Right. Whereas the flat pads tend to, I feel like it's more technique dependent almost. More Maybe technique developed. No, uh, it's more technique and also simply the flat pad is grabbing. So mm -hmm. you're having to fight the flat pad. Right, so that, I feel like my technique is how am I fighting the flatness? Right. You know, and then seven hours later I've finished the panel. Right, exactly. It looks good though. Looks <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I'm sure it's very shiny. But that being said, by using the rotary, low speed, no pressure, just finessing it along with a waffle pad, you're going to get a perfect finish with the rotary. So we're talking about why the pad that I, the panel that I cut with a rotary appears better in the final stage um, compared to a dual action cut. Yeah. Can you now, I know you just mentioned it, talk about finishing with the rotary? Because I'm still a hater, I still don't believe it. Yeah. I'm using a dual action to finish every time. Yeah. And I use a dual action to cut, but I use this to finish. Again, you get more gloss, more depth of gloss with the rotary. Yes, you have a chance of swirls. And that comes down to technique. But you can screw paint up really quickly with the DA as well. So how, how do I fight swirls when I'm finishing with a dual action? I mean, when I'm finishing with a rotary. Like, yeah. how do I do this? Um, how, is, is too much polish a problem? Is not enough? Is is pressure, like what am I trying to do with a rotary to finish? Right. I've never had success with it. So the ultimate recipe of finishing with the rotary. First of all, start with a clean pad. If you don't have a System 4000 pad washer, get one. Again, we're not sponsored, but it is the only one that actually works. From Lake Country. Yeah. yeah. So the System 4000 pad washer, use it. The reason you're getting swirls, you're getting all sorts of weird effects, holograms, whatever you, however you want to describe them with a rotary, is A, your pad isn't clean. B, your pad is dry. So now you have, you know, the typical, I put three dots on the pad. Yep. And you put the three dots on the pad, you go to town with it. Well, by the time those three dots have spread around all over the pad and you're not dry buffing anymore, you've already spent up those abrasives and you're not polishing. So with a rotary, Finishing, not cutting, you're gonna want a waffle pad. A waffle pad. Like an ultra fine or a medium cut or? I like the black waffle from okay. Lake Country. Uh, Buff and Shine makes a black waffle as well. It's pretty much a similar foam. Black is kind of traditionally a finishing. fine finishing pad. Yeah. Almost, I've seen black used to even apply waxes before. Yeah, it's exactly. That, it's that gentle, okay. Yeah. So a black pad. Um, a and clean then, pad. A clean pad, and then how much polish? So how, you were getting there, I kind of how much polish and how do you apply it? So there's different types of applying, different ways of applying a polish. You can have the traditional, you know, three or four drops, and pea size. Not grapefruits, not grapes, you know, just pea size, very small. You don't need a lot to finish. Hmm. I prefer spray polish. There's a couple companies that make a spray polish. Basically, start the machine up, as it's winding down, spray very close to the pad. But you, now you get a very even distribution of polish all over the pad. So instead of three dots doing the work, you've got 10,000 little dots doing the work. And the other aspect of a spray polish is that it meters it for you. So I'm cheap. 
those dots that I put on are very small. You're, you, you know, sort of a... I'm spend, a half a bottle per... Yeah, you're a spendy guy. kind of guy. So <laughs> you throw it on liberally. We'll put it that way. You know, it's more fun that way. Yeah. I don't like to be cleaning up spray all over the place. That's I why we have three steamers in here. Yeah, exactly. And I spend eight hours taping the car beforehand because right. I've had a few of those instances. Yeah, so I don't like taping. I don't like cleaning up over spray. I don't like any of that. So I keep my polish on the pad instead of on the wall, on the windshield, you know, everywhere else, on me. So that way the rotary, again, clean pad, and never put clean polish on a dirty pad. Have you polished single stage before? Yeah. So when you polish single stage, what happens to the pad? You get the color of the paint on your pad. Immediately? Yeah. When you're cutting clear coat, you're doing the same thing, but it's clear. You don't see it. Mm -hmm. So if your pad is dirty, it's not the pad doing the work anymore. It's you're trying to move around this spent polish with clear coat mixed in and all that. You're never going to get a good finish. But if you have a clean pad that's just out of the, the System 4000, it's damp, and that dampness prevents the dry buffing. Hmm. Okay. So never, it's providing never, a bit of lubrication. I've never been a damp uh, pad polisher. I've tried it, now, but it's not for me, right? And, and I'm also a hater, and I also spend 80 hours on a car, which yeah. is not profitable. No. And so that's why you're here. To, exactly. To teach me, you know, to put me in my place. <laughs> not in your place, just bring you to a better place. Oh, yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know basically a profitable place, That'd one nice. where your customer actually gets his car back the same week, <laughs> maybe like even the same day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me a month and it'll look good. Yeah, exactly. And you know, so with polishing, whether it be a rotary or DA, the technique is basically the same. If you can keep your pad flat, if you can reduce speed, if you can reduce heat, if you can reduce pressure, A, it's a lot easier on you. B, it's better on the car. There have been a few things that Ivan has really been a proponent of. Uh, the rinseless wash, efficiency, uh, running a profitable business. And you yeah. always said, polish with a rotary. But I don't see it taking off. Emotionally, how does it feel when you say this over and over again, and there's the DA uh, army out there, the DA army wants to finish with the dual action still. I mean, are you making headway? No. Are people well, doing this? Yeah, oh, well, people are doing it. I get comments on my channel all the time saying, okay. oh, I tried it, it's great, thank you. That being said, if you like finishing with a DA, finish with the DA. There's nothing wrong with using one or the other. There's no right, there's no wrong. As long as you're getting the result you want, and more importantly, the result your customer mm. wants, then we're good. I thought this was a battle royale, though. No, no. No. Uh, this is super educational. What else do you want to tell people about the rotary? Because you get these questions all the time. Yeah. I have a little bit more, I don't know, niche perspective. I'm doing things on the front line, detailing cars. Yeah. You're all over the world talking to people. What else do they want to know? Well, first of all, the DA is really popular in the US. Mm. Go to other parts of the world and you use a DA and they ask you if you're handicapped. Because the rotary is it. They don't, mm. you know, they consider that a toy. Yeah. Even the 21 millimeter. So different perspectives, different, part of the, different parts of the world. The other thing is, I'm at an age where I don't like to work. I'm semi-retired, right? This is like meditation. Mm. It's calming, it's quiet, it's easy. You're not working against it. There's no vibration as long as you center your pad. So there's a lot of good things to say about the DA, or the rotary. And one question I have for you, Ivan, what size pad should I use? Because this here, I believe, is a Lake Country backing plate on a Flex, whatever. Yep. It is what it is, I love it. Um, and, and six inch pads fit real nice on here, but the dual right. action is a five inch pad. You can get like the, eight inch pads on a rotary, right? So right. what size pad do you recommend for polishing and finishing? So for finishing, I like a six inch. Just mm. my personal preference. Uh, five inch works well, but I find that it's not as stable. Now, when I'm doing boats, when I'm doing agricultural stuff, I finish with an eight inch. Hmm. So it really comes down to what is personal preference for you. On a DA, if you're using a 21 millimeter stroke, normally they're a six inch backing plate. 15 millimeter, you'll find a five inch backing plate. And that's just standard. Yeah, that's yeah. standard. But a lot of companies allow you to interchange from a five to a six and back and forth. Right. On the DA, I prefer a 21 millimeter stroke with a six inch pad as well. Because if I'm gonna be using a DA, I might as well go all the way. 
I know I'm going to be finishing with this, so I don't mind the micro marring because I'm going to be taking it out with the rotary anyways. And there's a lot of good things to say about the DA. The DA, basically someone who's never polished before, can pick up a DA yep. and do an okay job. Yep. Now, in my shops, the training started with this. Once they got this down, then we gave them a DA to cut. Hmm. But the rotary was what they started with, which is, again, a little counterintuitive to most people, but if you can master this, that's easy. You know, Koch Chemie is a brand that I've used a lot, and I love their products. Yeah. And in Germany, I've watched a training video. They teach you how to cut with H9 on a rotary. And yeah. I did an interview with Andy B. Cool. He's the national trainer yeah, exactly. here in America. And he's like, we're not teaching anybody how to use a rotary. We are literally teaching a dual action system in terms of the American Koch Chemie training. Right. Because it's such a different perspective on what people are using you know, it, on the front lines. Exactly. And, you know, it really comes down to marketing. It's what are the companies no wanting way. to market? No, a little bit, there's yeah. There's no marketing involved in detailing. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But anyways, it comes down to the marketing of what the companies are wanting to show. And when you're showing someone how to use a DA, they're going to get results like this. Mm. It's going to be quicker. It's going to be faster. They're going to be feeling pumped up like, hey, I can do this. Well, in my trainings, I do the same thing with the rotary. I show people that Yes, you can finish with a rotary the first time you use it. It's not a long, steep learning curve if you follow the basic principles of flat, slow, clean. Sir, it's been real. I still love you, DA. I still <laughs> yeah. love you, Rotary. I have an appreciate your time. Yeah. Where can they find you on your YouTube channel? Well, they can find me at the Detailers Business Academy on YouTube. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below when you're on my channel. But your channel is... Hawk Pro Detailing. Yeah. And oh yeah, this is on both channels. <laughs> yeah. I've been shooting, I'm shooting Hawk Pro Detailing. Um, we've been doing this for, what, four or five years now? And yeah. And seen you out here for training, and then also you came and did a big shop revamp. So if you're watching this on my channel, we've got a lot of Ivan videos, and uh, those will be easy to find as well. Yeah. And on my channel, well, we got one. Actually, no, I did an interview with him. I don't know which will be posted first, but anyways. Thanks In a lot. In the space-time continuum, it's hard to know where we are. But, uh, yeah, but right now it's March 2022. Next thing you know, he'll be at the Rag Company in Idaho, and then where else? Uh, after that, Omaha, Nebraska, maybe Colorado, uh, then Chicago, New York State. And then they can find the LaCroix Cruiser on YouTube as well? Yeah. So which just, is the way that you travel the world. Yeah, so, the country, well, the, the, yeah, the, con yeah. the continent, yeah. Shipping the bus overseas is not exactly a convenient thing. There I fly. But yeah, so the LaCroix crews are on YouTube. You can see the whole build and our travels and all that fun stuff. Okay, questions, comments, leave them below. Ivan and I will be replying to them. We will see you on the next one.